take into consideration the values labeled in this diagram showing the elliptical orbit of a planet about the Sun. If we look at the planet at position number one at perigee and compare to position two, uh, or I'm sorry, perihelion compared to position two, aphelion. Angular momentum is conserved. The angular momentum at position one equals the angular momentum at position two. Now this is consistent with the law of equal areas. If we imagine some passage of time and the satellite has moved along the perimeter of the elliptical orbit, if we consider the same interval of time beyond its position at aphelion, then the shaded regions are equal. Mass times velocity one times distance at position number one equals mass times velocity two times position number two, and the mass cancels out of the equation. So we can say that the speed at position number um, one is equal to r2 over r1 times the speed at position number two. Or if we want, we could say the speed at aphelion is equal to r1 over r2 times the speed at perihelion. So we've got a total of four variables that are um, have some sort of interplay with each other. Now, not only is angular momentum conserved, but energy is conserved. The sum of potential and kinetic energies have to be equal at positions one and two. So at perihelion, when the planet is close to the sun, it has less potential energy, but more kinetic energy and vice versa. So let's see, um, or how about I write it this way? K plus U, K plus U. Kinetic energy at point one plus potential energy at point one is equal to kinetic energy and potential energy summed up at point number two. One half M V one squared minus G M M over R one equals one half M V two squared minus G M M over R two. M, the mass of the planet, appears in every term, so we can cancel that out. We can multiply through by 2 as well, I suppose. V1 squared minus 2GM over R1 equals V2 squared minus 2GM over R2. V1 squared minus V2 squared is equal to 2GM times the quantity 1 over R1 minus 1 over R2. We can make a substitution now. Um, let's substitute out for velocity at position number one, for example. So we can replace it with R2 over R1 quantity times V2. R2 over R1, that's a little sloppy, isn't it? R2 over R1 times V2 quantity squared minus V2 squared is equal to 2 GM 1 over R1 minus 1 over R2. Um, let me divide this side of the equation by R2 at the same time that I multiply it by R2. And if I do so, then I can distribute this R2 in. Okay, so now in step six, we have R2 over R1 quantity squared times, uh, sorry, R2 over R1 quantity squared minus one multiplied by V2 squared is equal to 2gm 
over R2 times the quantity R2 over R1 minus 1. If we want, we can let x equal the ratio r2 over r1. So then we can see this is x squared minus 1. And here it's x minus 1. Well, that's the same thing as x minus 1 times x plus 1. So I can cancel out x minus 1. So we really have x plus 1 times v2 squared is 2gm over r2, and that's it. But of course, x really is r2 over r1. So r2 over r1 plus 1 times v2 squared is 2gm divided by r2. So v2 is equal to uh, v2 squared is equal to 2gm over r2 times 1 over 1 plus r2 over r1. v2 is equal to the square root of 2gm over the quantity r2 times 1 plus the ratio r2 over r1. Okay, so now we can reduce it instead of having four variables, v1, v2, r2, and r1. Now we see we've eliminated one of it and made an equation with only three variables, which means as long as we know any two we can figure out the others. If you're given the distance at um, aphelion and the distance at perihelion, then you should be able to figure out what the speed is at aphelion. And if you can figure out the speed at aphelion, don't forget, we also have the results of conservation of angular momentum. So if we put these two equations together, along with R1 V1 equals R2 V2, then as long as we know any two of these four quantities, we can figure out the other two. Now, for example, what if we have the case of a circular orbit? Well, in the case of a circular orbit, R1 equals r2. And if we apply that to this equation, we have the speed at aphelion should be equal to the square root of 2gm over r2 times the quantity 1 plus 1. But 1 plus 1 is 2, and it cancels this one. And now we're just left with v is equal to the square root of gm over r. But we know that as the equation for a circular orbit, so it seems like this equation we've derived uh, makes reasonable sense. So let's see if we can apply these equations in another video lesson um, where we investigate something known as a Hohmann transfer. Anyhow, for now, just keep in mind that two quantities are conserved for planets as they orbit in elliptical paths. Angular momentum is conserved and mechanical energy is conserved and from that we can derive two useful equations.